Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be having a look in terms of the techniques that you can use in post-production to get a vintage 90s and 80s kind of film look uh, from a modern day mirrorless camera. Let's dive into it. First of all, let's address the what. What is it here that we're actually trying to emulate? These images that you'll see on screen are taken from a real 35 millimeter film camera uh, that I've shot and processed in the lab, and then I just kind of scanned for us to have a look. Let's pay attention to a couple of things. First of all, notice how the colors are generally faded. There is less sort of contrast, there's less vibrance, there's less saturation in the blues and the whites, and the blacks are crushed. You'll see that a lot. That's kind of a uh, big aspect of uh, film photography and film in general. Uh, the other thing is that you'll notice that around the light, there's often a halation effect whereby the light is taken from the film and it kind of spills from the areas of the image that have highlights onto the shadows, creating this kind of nice halo effect. And the final thing is that you might also notice that in some cases, in some cases, there is uh, a bit of a sort of texture to the film that is actually embedded into the image. So anyway, the low contrast and the kind of faded look and the halation is what we're trying to emulate here. So let's have a look in terms of how we can do this. First of all, uh, contrary to uh, popular belief, your color grading to anything really starts uh, in camera, okay? So you have to kind of set your camera settings at the beginning of your shoot uh, to make sure that it uh, matches to the best of your ability, the look that you're going for. So in my case, I'm using the Panasonic GH5. I'm shooting in Cine D. This is a very flat picture profile. It's not quite log, but it's pretty flat. And what I've also done is I've taken my sharpness, my contrast and my saturation, and I've turned that all the way down. If you're shooting on a different camera, just make sure you have a flat picture profile. Or if your camera doesn't have that, take your natural picture profile and turn down saturation, contrast, uh, and sharpness all the way down. Next thing, just make sure you're uh, shooting in uh, manual white balance and manual focus mode, so you don't want any sort of drifting and hunting. The next couple of things I'm gonna show you here in Premiere Pro, predominantly the first thing is uh, this first adjustment layer that I'm using. On this adjustment layer, I have my color grade, and mostly I'm just using two very simple aspects. I'm using this S-curve in the curve panel. And what I'm doing here is I'm adding a very, very minor curve to add a tiny bit of contrast back in. But most importantly, you see here, I'm flicking the, uh, the, the blacks, I'm flicking that up a bit. And what that does is that crushes the blacks and it kind of gives this imperfect kind of faded film look to the blacks and the dark uh, parts of the image. The second thing that I'm doing is actually in the creative tab mode, I'm using an inbuilt LUT that is in Adobe Premiere Pro. And I'm using this kind of Fuji 125 Kodak uh, 2395 by Adobe that I'm putting onto the adjustment layer, layer as well. <laughs> um, and that kind of gives it a nice vintage look as well. So just with these two techniques already, you are sort of pretty good in terms of getting to that uh, nostalgic image, if you will. But the third thing and the thing that I find most interesting uh, that will kind of really take your vintage look to the next level is by using a different adjustment layer where there is an effect called Gaussian blur. I'm probably not pronouncing this correctly, but yeah, Gaussian blur. Um, and what that does is, remember earlier how I was referring to the halation aspect of the image whereby the light spills from the highlights onto the shadows, creating a nice sort of halo effect. Now what this uh, Gaussian blur does is if you take it and you put it onto your adjustment layer, and if you adjust blurriness all the way to 100, and then set blend mode to screen, the blur is gonna overlay itself over the images that you've taken, um, and it's gonna produce that very nice sort of halo effect around the highlights and it's going to give that sort of imperfect kind of spill of color. A lot of people uh, today are actually using 
filters like the Promist, uh, Tiffin Promist filter and the Cindy Bloom filters to achieve that in uh, it, to achieve that look baked into the camera. But I think it's better to actually do it in post-production because first of all, you might not want to bake that look into your images. And second of all, um, when you adjust opacity and if you adjust the blurriness, it kind of gives you a bit of a more play in terms of having more control over how much blur you want and how much halo effect you want in your images. By the way, uh, make sure you tick this little box over here because if you don't tick that box, um, you're gonna have a vignette around your sort of overall like kind of image in the corners. Just if you tick that, the vignette will kind of go away. I hope you found these tips useful. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.